Hi, and thanks again for joining me on another episode of Sealed for Good. Today we're going to talk about a lot of uh, items that come through to our tech inquiry line and inquiries through to our tech services department on coverage calculations. It comes up quite a bit and because I'm going to get into a little bit of math today, not that I'm not good at my math, but I'm actually going to read off some notes because it is important to show you on how to calculate and get this right. We get a lot of customers, both applicators and also builders, wanting to understand how they convert things like litres to square metre, kilos to square metre, or how they actually calculate the quantities of product they need to use on a project. So um, calculating the quantities you need, the material quantities you need, comes up quite often. And it's for a number of reasons it comes up here. Either data sheets or labels on pails don't have enough information out in the marketplace. Um, people have trouble interpreting that data, and I'll go through that later because that happens to me sometimes where uh, even though I've been doing this for a long time, there's some data out there on certain products that I'm a bit uh, belittled on how to work it all out. Or you get guys that uh, just don't want to read the data sheets or read the information on labels and get it wrong and then um, the coverage is all buggered up where you've got a very thin membrane coating on an application and it fails. So let's talk about litres per square metre. This is, We'll start with the simpler stuff and get, it, get a little more difficult. So litres per square metre, if I use a product like our Gripset 38, we sell it in a 15 litre pail and our basic specification for most jobs is that we recommend in total coverage one and a half litres per square metre when you apply the product. Now, that means that if you're, um, you've got a 15 litre pail, if I work out one and a half litres per square metre, it should give me 10 square metres from one pail at that coverage. If I've got 100 square metres, okay, I could uh, multiply this out by 1.5, that gives me a total of 150 litres I'm going to need for that project. So I can either multiply the number up or divide it back down. Okay. So I've got that 100 square metres of area to do. I know that I, one and a half litres per square metre, I require 1.5 litres per square metre, times out by the 100 square metres. 150 litres in total is what I'll need by the job. If I've got a grip set 38 pail, which you see coming up on screen now in a 15 litre form, then I divide that 150 by the 15 and I need 10 pails to do the job. A real simple one. I'm going to now talk about kilos per square meter because this is the one that tricks a lot of guys and it does also for us. And this often refers to many products that are in powder form that uh, arrive in a bag or sometimes a bag's inside a bucket and then you add water to it. And what happens is the kilos per square meter coverage is not clear sometimes on whether that's in the mixed form once the water is added or in the powder form the way it is. I can talk to you about our products, the Gripset products. We always, if we've got a product in kilos like with our powders, and let's use a C1P for an example, our coverage is in kilo per square meter. That refers back to the dried powder, not once it's mixed with water. So uh, basically if we were to do a water tank application, okay, and C1P is a product that's often used for those sorts of applications, our specification requires a two millimeter film and so in our data sheet it states that for every one millimeter of film thickness you need 1.25 kilos of the powder. So quite simply if I times 1.25 by 2 means I need 2.5 kilos per square meter to get that, that uh, project done and so then basically um, for a 2 mil bed, a 15 kilo bag, I'm going to get 6 square metres out of that. I'm going to have to divide 15 by 2.5 because it comes in a 15 kilo bag. I will, and divide that by 2.5, I've got 6 square metres and I can calculate my coverage from there. So if I've got, for example, 100 square metres of tank area to be waterproofed and I've got 6 square metres per bag, I divide 100 by 6 and my math gives me 16.6 bags, or if we round that up, you take it to 17 bags. And that's how you work it. Because when you mix water with powders, obviously uh, in different temperatures with cement-based products, you get a different hydration rate. And so that can slightly change the, um, the literage or the weight of the product that you've mixed up. 
but if you measure it by the kilos and the dry weight, you'll always get that right in terms of calculating. Particularly for larger jobs where guys are out there pricing up work, you don't want to be getting this piece wrong and find that you're 20% wrong with your calculations on materials and you're short. The next piece is converting kilos to litres and this is one is a little bit more tricky on, on a few fronts. I'll talk about two component products. So we've got a product the grips at 2P which is a 15 kilo bag and a 10 litre pail of liquid. So when you mix that up it, in weight it forms 25 kilos but the way you want to work that product is that the 25 kilos is what the weight is but you've got to look at the volume that it forms. And so on our data sheet, it tells you that when you mix the two together, it forms 20 litres. And our coverage is still the same of one and a half litres per square metre. So if I do the math on that from a 20 litre unit, I'll get about 13.3, 13.5 square metres from a 20 litre pail. And so I, I've got to go work back to the litreage. And I'll tell you why, because I'm going to go into something else in a moment in terms of other products out in the marketplace. But that is a really important piece. In terms of, uh, there are some products out there where the yield can be um, a bit of an issue in terms of how you calculate the quantity you use. And I'm going to use some examples of some of our products from our European friends, not naming any brands, but quite commonly I might see a 20 kilo powder, which is a liquid membrane, uh, sorry, a 20 kilo pail made of a liquid membrane, and it will tell me that I've got to try and work um, so many kilos per square meter. Now the reality is you cannot understand from kilos on site unless you've got scale and you, scale and you weigh every kilo and know how many square meters you need to lay per kilo. So the way to, to overcome this if you've got this situation, um, if you've got a product that states kilos in a liquid form, what you need to do is you look at the data sheet and it will have a thing called SG or specific gravity. The specific gravity is a number that tells you what one litre weighs. So if I use an example of a product that might have 1.3, if I've got a product that says SG or specific gravity of 1.3, basically I divide 1 for 1 litre by 1.3 and I can work out then how many litres per uh, sorry, yeah, how many litres for that per kilo? So if I'm confusing you, let's go to a 20 kilo pail. I've seen a couple of products out there that promote that have got a 20 kilo unit of product, but it's liquid. I divide that, if the specific gravity is 1.3, I divide the 20 by 1.3, and I'd work out that that pail has actually got 15.3 litres. And then I can work out from what they're recommending on their label or data sheet, how many kilos per square metre. So if it says that pail should do 10 square metres, I know that virtually I can work back on the litreage per square metre from there. I convert the kilos to litres, because as you guys know on site, no one has a scale, but you can always work out how many litres per square metre. And so it's much easier to try and work back to find out how many square metres you will use per pail. That is the way to do it, and ensure you've complied with the specification of the product. Thankfully with, grip, thankfully with Gripset products, we put all our liquid products in litres, so you can calculate how many square meters per liter. And our kilo products we will give you a conversion on how many kilos per square meter so you can easily calculate it. And if we've got a two-part product, like I mentioned before, with our grips at 2P, where it's a kilo and literage uh, unit of measure, we put it back to liters, and so you can convert how many liters per square meter you'll use on site. I hope I haven't confused you. However, this is one, as I said, for two reasons. For people that are um, quoting on projects and trying to work out how much material they need, this is a part you need to get right. When you're on site and you're actually doing a job, you need to know exactly what the specification is and the coverage per bag or pail or unit. And so if you get that measure wrong, the final film thickness will be wrong and then that's going to compromise the final performance of the product. So really, really important. There are a couple of easy tools you can set up. If you contact our office, we've got a little Excel spreadsheet that we can give you that can easily, you can use at home or from your home office or on your phone on how you actually calculate all that. But it is something that just, it's important to understand. Once you've got that, you can then ensure you're doing the job properly. 
If you've got any questions though, you know you've always got us on 1800 650 435. Call us, we're happy to help you there. Or send us an email and we'll help you out that way. Thanks again for joining on Silver Good and I'll see you next time.